Hey guys, today we are reacting to the Sunny V video. Hollywood won't cast these seven actors anymore. Why? Well, this seems like a very interesting topic and interesting video, so we're gonna watch it. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's check it out. We're gonna talk about seven actors who are no longer cast by Hollywood, beginning with Sean William Scott, whose performance as Stifler in American Pie was so iconic that it actually hindered him from landing future roles. Sean Oh, you're telling me he was cancelled? Big shock. <laughs> but I don't know if that was um, because of American Pie. If anything, American Pie got him like the career that he had. I think what made his um, career be cut short... Well, I'm just getting ahead of myself here. But what I think happened with Sean William Scott is that um, he did Bulletproof Monk, which was a disaster. He started off with Welcome to the Jungle, you know, starring um, The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. But then Bulletproof Monk was such a disaster, I think it broke his career. I think people were trying to have Sean William Scott as a leading man, and they found out that, you know, he probably didn't bring the numbers they were looking for, and that's where his career started to go, um, you know, downhill. People started to think, you know, I gave him the shot, he didn't pull the numbers, so let's move on. I don't know, maybe that's my theory future roles. Sean stated in a 2010 interview, I had so much fun and loved the character, but I don't want to be known as that character forever. Now I'm realizing that I probably will be known as that character forever. Also adding in a Conan O'Brien interview that Stifler's basically all he's seen as when fans meet him in real life. You well, I, in my personal opinion, okay, I'm going to comment a lot on this video, but in my personal opinion, I don't see him as Stifler anymore. If anything, I see him as the dude from Evolution. That was a good movie. Have you ever watched Evolution? I see him as the caca, caca guy. I don't know. Maybe it's because, you know, American Pie wasn't like my go-to movie when I was growing up. Wonder why? <laughs> Do people like think you're Stifler? Do you have situations where people no people think that I'm my guy? Yeah. They, like they think that I'm Stifler. This made it difficult for Sean to land any role where he wasn't playing a douchey frat boy. Although this wasn't so much of an issue at the start. He'd star in films such as Dude Where's My Car, The Dukes of Hazard, nice. as well as role models, finding success in each film with the American Pie persona. However, these types of raunchy teen comedies aren't all that common anymore. And with Sean William Scott approaching his 50th birthday, <laughs> it's not wow. difficult to see why he no longer has the same utility as he used to. Bro, we're getting old. I know that you're watching this because you, you're from the same generation. I don't reckon that many teenagers are watching this video because the, the thumbnail shows Borat and Sean William Scott. Why would you click on it, you know, if you're not a fan of these guys? Between 2019 and 2022, Sean didn't appear in a single production, yet he would return in a TV series called Welcome to Flatch, in which Sean still looks exactly like Stifler over 23 years later. Although Sean William Dude, Scott age. isn't the only actor with this problem. So, okay, um, Sunny V2 did a great job talking about Sean William Scott, but he didn't talk about Welcome to the Jungle, which was... Um, it was okay, I guess. It was, the, I think, the debut of The Rock. He didn't talk about Bulletproof Monk, which was a complete flop, and it was even banned in China. Um, so I, th I think there wasn't a deep dive into the, the real reason that Sean William Scott wasn't um, cast in, in more, more movies. Um, I think people just, you know, tried something else with him. He, he, of course, he was being typecasted as that young teenage douchebag whatever that stifler was um but i don't think that's that's the reason um because people did try to put him in other actions roles and um i just think he didn't pull the numbers i think people were were expecting like him to blow up as an action star or maybe that was that's what he was pursuing he was turning down a lot of work and in hollywood when you do that when you turn down a lot of um you know roles people stop asking basically you know that's how life is 
As Christopher Mintz Plass has been unable to escape the legendary name McLovin ever McLovin. since starring in Superbad. The movie was literally Chris's very first acting role, being cast for his unique nerdy appearance, which when plastered on a certain iconic fake <laughs> ID, made him recognizable to everybody. It stayed in a Vanity Fair interview, the day after it came out I was a nobody, 18 years old. I'd never done anything in my life. And then the next day I go to a Habit restaurant, and then someone across the way goes McLovin, in front of like 40 people. That's then I was cool. like, oh, something is changing in the atmosphere here, leading to concerns from fellow Superbad co-star Emma Stone, who stated, is Chris Mintz Plass going to be called McLovin for the rest of his life? Chris had found himself with the same curse as Sean William Scott, which is interesting as the two would star alongside each other only one year after Superbad, where Chris played a character very similar to McLovin. More than That is a nice movie though. That is a good movie. Um, it's with Ant-Man also, um, you know, um, Rudd, Paul Rudd. It's a nice movie. I mean, you know. Half of his five most recent films have been voice acting roles, possibly done so he could disassociate from McLovin, yet on the trailer for his most recent film called Honor Roll, one of the top comments is still, you know you're getting old when McLovin from Superbad now plays guidance counselor roles in teen wow. movies. Despite being unable to escape the curse of McLovin, Christopher Mintz Plass has managed to find success in the music industry with his band called Main Man. When asked during an interview, do you ever feel pulled toward acting or music more than the other, Chris responded by stating, I would love to keep balancing the two. I think I'm very lucky and grateful for where I am right now that I can do both. Acting, you can work for three months and not work for six months. So in that time, I love the momentum of music and everything that's going on. The momentum right now is very musical. I kind of just go with the flow. And it seems as though Jim Carrey has taken on a similar attitude. In the early days, Jim Carrey had a never ending list of cult classic films. The Grinch, The Mask, The Truman Show, Dumb and Dumber, Ace Ventura, even eternal sunshine of a spotless mind was amazing. However, when was the last time you heard any hype around a Jim Carrey movie after maybe the second Dumb and Dumber almost 10 years ago? But come on, it's not because people won't cast him. I mean, he's in Sonic, bro. <laughs> That's the last thing we heard from him, Sonic and Sonic 2. Um, but the thing about Jim Carrey is that he kind of got lost in his own mind. If you if you watch the documentary that he talks about, um, um, the Andy Andy Warhol, is that the name? But um, the Man in the Moon. When he did the Man in the Moon, he he got lost in his own mind, and and from that moment on. Bro, he was going crazy. Um, you see him in interviews, you see him in, in many different places. So I think he was kind of like fed up. He did everything that he had. He was like the biggest star out there. Um, he tried his hand in, in drama. You know, he even did um, some villain roles. Um, and, you know, he did a few things that were out of his comfort zone and um it worked but you can see that when an actor tries to do that it means that you know they want to try something different they've done everything um in many interviews he he was like very serious and you know it, it feels like he was done with the whole clown you know persona um so i don't think it's about typecasting it's i don't think it's anything about that because um jim carrey has shown himself to be a very versatile funny dramatic emotional actor um especially when you watch um the truman show even back then bro th that movie is is almost it's borderline psychological thriller almost but you know he puts a light touch to it um so I think the most or the biggest reason he hasn't been in movies isn't because of, you know, uh, he lost his spark or anything like that. That's not at all the reason. I just think it's because of personal choice and, you know, personal development, um, his art, you know, um, he had to spend a few moments with himself to recover 
software. There's a good reason for this. Between 2016 and 2020, Jim Carrey took a four year hiatus from acting, which seemed to have been catalyzed by the death of his ex-girlfriend in late 2015. The tragedy not only resulted in grief, but Jim Carrey That's also him. had to spend the entirety of 2017 embroiled in various lawsuits related to her passing. He was dismissed of any legal wrongdoing in early 2018, yet only six months later in a Hollywood Reporter interview, it was explained that Jim Carrey was an actor who had effectively renounced his own celebrity after stating, I just didn't want to be in the business anymore. I didn't like what was happening, the corporations taking over and all that. And maybe it's because I felt pulled toward a different type of creative outlet. Okay, so I got ahead of myself. He's saying exactly what I was saying, so I'm sorry about that. Jim Carrey instead began to focus on painting, and while he would return to acting for a brief period in 2020, he'd go on to state this in April 2022. Well, I'm retiring, but I, I really liked my quiet life, and I really love putting paint on canvas. And this is something you might never hear another celebrity say as long as time exists. I have enough. I've done enough. I am enough. He added that Sonic the Hedgehog 2 would be his final movie, and apart from a small appearance in the week, Weekend's out of time music video, Jim Carrey has stayed true to his retirement. But whatever happened. Okay, that is cool. Okay, so there was a, a broader, uh, uh, actually a more in depth explanation. I got ahead of myself. I'm sorry about that. But um, it's funny because he said, I am enough, which is um, a joke that he actually made in, I think it was the Emmys, um, about the two time nominated Grammy. Grammy? No, Emmy Award actor. <laughs> then I will be enough. That's what he said in that one. Um, but guys, I think the, the whole thing about Jim Carrey is that he is a very, very talented actor and we, we really want to see more of him. And there's something about comedians doing drama, which is, I think, the best, the best thing that... A, a comedian can do if he's talented. Um, I really love seeing comedians take on a, a more serious role. I really do. And Jim Carrey is one of those guys that he, if he does drama, you know, he kills it. He has a very... Bro, Jim Carrey is very talented uh, not only in acting, but in singing, in um, um, painting, and bro, he is really, really, really good at, at, you know, artistic um, performances. Out of time music video, Jim Carrey has stayed true to his retirement. But whatever happened to Tobey Maguire? As summarized well by this comment, I don't care what other movies this guy plays in, he will always be Spider-Man to me. Yeah, okay, so um, there are so many actors out there that they can get out of typecasting, but I don't think Tobey Maguire will be able to get out of typecasting elijah wood shouldn't <laughs> i don't think i think he's gonna have the same problem elijah wood toby mcguire these two are et eternally you know and um daniel radcliffe also bro daniel radcliffe is harry potter you can't you can't look at him and think of anyone else um toby mcguire is spider-man you can't think of anyone else and um elijah wood is frodo you can't look at him and think of anyone else. I think even the sidekick, Sam, you can't think of anyone else. Sam, he is and always will be Sam, which is different from, you know, Gandalf, because Gandalf is also Magneto. You kind of like forget, you know, so Gandalf saved himself from typecasting. And while this is true for most Tobey Maguire fans, he isn't really typecast in the same way as McLovin or Stifler. He found success playing fairly unique roles in other films such as The Great Gatsby, yet since 2014, almost 10 years ago, he appeared in no more than three films and one episode of a TV show. Why? He's not a romantic lead, he's not an action star, he's not a comedic actor, he's not a Shakespearean. His boyish good looks were appealing in his 20s and 30s, but not when he's in his early 40s. Basically, Tobey Maguire has a limited range as an actor and there aren't many roles for him within that range. Besides I bet if you put him in a horror movie, you will strive. I bet. Put him in a horror movie. Besides being fairly limited in terms of what roles he can play, Tobey Maguire has also found himself in numerous media scandals. In Bro, he has proven to all of us. <laughs> 
<laughs> Bro, he has in this clip alone, he has proven to us that he can be a psychopath. I mean, if you put him in a psychopath role where he shows his complete anger, <laughs> oh, that's going to be a great movie, you know. Besides being fairly limited in terms of what roles he can play, Tobey Maguire has also found himself in numerous media scandals. Put him in a psychological thriller. Tell me if he's not going to be a great actor. You know, um, I think people kind of like limit the actors. Uh, I think typecasting is not a real thing. Um, the agencies are the ones who, who imagine this, you know. Um, I don't think... I think great directors can see past that. So typecasting is an invention of the agencies. You know, people try to put limitations on you, um, like Arnold Schwarzenegger or St uh, Sylvester Stallone. People were trying to, you know, say that they couldn't do anything else than other than, you know, be big and and muscular. And that's not true. They can act. They really can. In 2015, it was reported that Maguire won as much as 30 to 40 million from illegal poker games over the course of three years. With I think I knew about that. Most of this money having come from a hedge fund manager who's now serving 10 years in prison himself for running an illegal Ponzi scheme. The po and you're telling me he can't play anything other than Spider-Man? This dude is the real Chad. Although, you know, these are criminal offenses that he's been accused of. <laughs> But yeah. Poker games were organized by a woman named Molly Bloom, who wrote in her memoir that Maguire asked her to bark like a seal who wants a fish in order to earn a thousand dollar poker chip. The poker game organizer added that she tried to laugh it off. However, the actor persisted and said, I'm not kidding, what's wrong? You're too rich now, you won't bark for a thousand dollars. On top of this scandal, there are YouTube compilations dedicated solely to Toby Maguire getting angry at paparazzi. Which is the best meme, by the way. The best meme. Um, what's the name of this meme again? M mean Toby? No. Bad Toby? I forgot the name of this meme, but it's, it's, it's one of the funniest memes out there, bro. Although the main reason behind why he's disappeared from Hollywood is because he's busy making movies as opposed to acting in them. Oh, Despite wow. having acted in only four productions since 2014, Nobody. he's been the producer for eight movies during the same time period, which is significant. Nobody is a good movie, and it, it plays into what I was talking about, um, comedians playing a serious role. Um, what is the name? I forgot. Uh, Bob? What is his name? Bob? Oh, I forgot his name, but he's from Better Call Saul, Breaking Bad. Bro, and Breaking Bad is another of my favorite series because it's um, Brian Craston, who's also a comedian, you know, from Malkin in the Middle, and he played... Oh, bro, Heisenberg, incredible, incredible performance. And um, nobody is a good movie if you want to watch it. I actually recommend it. It, it It's, it's kind of, I don't know. I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that it's kind of like a washed out. Um, um, <laughs> that's not sounding right. That's not sounding very promotional to this movie or very beneficial to this movie. But um, it, it's like a washed down um, John Wick, kind of. I don't know. But it's a nice movie. You, you, I think you'll enjoy yourself watching it. 14. He's been the producer for eight movies during the same time period, which is significantly more prolific than Taylor Lautner. Taylor Lautner. Okay. Um, Twilight is one of those meme worthy movies many people loved it many people hated it but um it typecasted many actors but you see that um batman the batman came out of that movie <laughs> so it's possible to i mean if edward cullen managed to get out of that typecasting then taylor lautner would be able to leave that as well but then again, um, he gained weight. I don't know if that was on purpose. So let's watch, let's just watch. Who was blacklisted by Hollywood for a much more brutal reason. Taylor Lautner became an overnight sensation at the age of 16 after starring in the incredibly famous series Twilight with his attractive physical appearance helping him to land the role and maintain an audience of dedicated teenage fangirls. I remember this. I remember that all the girls were talking about his abs and stuff like that. So.
I mean, what you gonna do? Dude has abs. <laughs> Almost every Taylor Lorna interview focused on his body. So everybody's talking about the scene where you um, drop your pants. <laughs> How what? is that? With the whole Be Team Hayes. Jacob vs Team Edward fiasco, we're helping Taylor Lorna to earn an estimated $40 million from the franchise. Wow, he was so famous good. that for 10 whole years, he didn't go to a grocery store, movie theater, or a mall. Although over time, this insane level of fame began to fade. The four movies he starred in after Twilight each failed to crack six stars on IMDb. The worst of which being described as a fourth-rate Hollywood thriller that bundles a lot of thievery from better movies, is entirely bereft of suspense or excitement, and features a leading man who absolutely positively cannot act. And by 2016, Taylor Lautner had stopped exercising altogether, leading him to lose the body that had made him so famous in the first place. Bro, is that depression? Because I know that depression can really get you overweight really like wow it's it's a serious thing can't joke about that or you can't play with that what is the expression i'm looking for i don't know but you can't take it lightly you know what i mean um and maybe it's even something that was like hurting him right because i know that some people like they they get angry that the thing that was working for them isn't working anymore so i'm not a psychologist or anything but i would i would suggest that you know maybe he was going into movies you know showing off his body still and it's, it wasn't working for him and he was like you know what i'm tired of this this is just too much it's hard to maintain this body it's hard to you know I, I, i'm done with it and he started hating that lifestyle and just started, you know, enjoying himself. I don't know. Let's see if, if he talks about that. And, you know, what happens when you don't want to see a gym is you start losing the, the eight pack. <laughs> Seeing it online was very tough. And being like, wow, he's let it all go. I'm, I was like, oh, man. Did I really let it all go? It'd be unfair to call Taylor Lautner's Twilight success lucky, as he definitely had to put in a lot of work prior to landing the role, but it did seem like he'd caught the right wave at the right time. The but then again, let me just stress one point. When he went to Twilight, the first movie, he wasn't this buff. He wasn't, you know, the guy with eight abs, sorry, with an eight pack with the abs. He wasn't that, he wasn't known for that. So, um, he did go audition and get the role because he was char charismatic and he was very talented. It wasn't all about the looks. Um, I think that whole idea of, oh, you're in, only in this movie because of your abs and your body and whatever is something the media implemented and, you know, um, tried to, to put on him. So he was typecasted as the, the good, uh, good looking um, fit guy. But remember that from the first movie, I think to the second movie, he wasn't um, he wasn't that big. In fact, he was asked to gain all the, you know, the body mass or he would be replaced, if that's something I recall correctly. Um, and he did. He said, hey, trust me, I'm, I'm going to put on the weight. I'm going to, you know, um, work hard, put on the mass. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I remember that story, you know. Anyways, let's keep going. The movie demanded a fit guy in his late teens, which Taylor Lautner suited perfectly at the time. However, this on its own was insufficient to ensure any long-term success. But while every person we've discussed so far has continued to land small roles here and there, it's time to talk about Cameron Diaz, who hasn't been cast in a single movie since 2014. She hasn't been cast or she didn't want to be cast. I mean, let's get that right. Let's get that straight. Because, you know, sometimes when people reach the maximum of their stardom, they start being picky. They just don't feel it anymore, you know, and it feels like she she's done like 59 movies before that. So I don't know. She found massive success with movies such as Shrek, Charlie's Angels, and There's Something About Mary, holding the title of the highest paid actress over the age of 40, while appearing in multiple films every year up until her disappearance. So I mean, come on, that's the thing. So 
like the wording here i i don't really agree with um and i know i'm getting ahead of myself he's going to explain but the wording is she hasn't been cast kind of gives a negative um feel to it like as in she isn't you know wanted anymore but i don't know i think she probably is so what happened? Well, unlike most of the others we've covered in this video, Cameron Diaz's vanishing from Hollywood instead came from her end. She'd explained in an interview with Kevin Hart that as someone who performed at the top level of her field, she needed to spend every waking hour focusing on the craft and she was tired of living such a singular focused life. Cameron Diaz has instead had a baby, written two self-help books and launched a wine brand See? called Aveline, which seems to be much more than what Sasha Baron Cohen has been up to. After Borat grossed over two 250 million back in 2006, Sasha Baron Cohen saw a steady decline in the performance of every film afterwards. The Dictator did 180 million, Bruno did 140 million, yet by 2016, Grimsby did only 28 million on a budget of 35 million, meaning the film lost $7 million, whilst prompting reviews such as Baron Cohen is a one trick pony and his shtick has worn thin. Wow. Wow, critics can be brutal, but I don't think so because you know Baron Cohen did. Um, was it the translator or the what was the name of that movie? It's a very dramatic movie. He also did the Chicago Nine. Is that if I'm recalling it correctly? Um, the dude can act. Not only comedy, but he does a very nice um, um, drama roles. Bro, you know, he, he's a very talented man. In 2016, he stated that Hollywood would be too scared to make Borat today, explaining that the incredibly crude humor which made the movie so successful was better suited to when the film was first released. The and you know, it's funny because um, Borat is a Kazakhstan actor, uh, sorry, reporter. The, the fictional character Borat is from Kazakhstan and he's a reporter. And people in Kazakhstan, which I have um, talked to personally myself, they say they love Borat. They actually love him. You know, they don't take offense. So I think people who are offended would be, you know, offended on behalf of the Kazakh people, I guess. Uh, but people from Kazakhstan, by the way, shout out to Kazakhstan, Salam um, it's And I think the fact is that if they're okay with it, then I don't think we should be offended, you know, by it. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. The kind of stuff he pulled off in Borat is much harder to do in this YouTube slash iPhone age, as Cohen himself admitted while doing press for this one. The same kind of problem can also be applied to Bruno in The Dictator, but it's the risky comedy in these films that makes them so entertaining to watch. On top of being more limited in terms of what jokes he can make, Sasha Baron Cohen has also been limited by lawsuits. He but that's the, the thing about the internet today. Uh, many people, most people, they laugh at the joke. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, now let me end this man's career. So they first laugh at it, and then they criticize it and cancel them for it. But deep down inside, they found it funny. And, you know, I, I find that to be very um, Will Smith. <laughs> As in, laugh first, slap later. He stated in a 2012 interview that he could no longer make movies like Borat and Bruno, as the movies I did up till now, they involved real people. At the moment, I think I have the Guinness World Record for the most sued actor in history, with wow. Borat accounting for at least seven of these lawsuits. Despite this, Sasha Baron Cohen did release Borat 2 in October 2020, which was purchased by Amazon for $80 million. So while it's clear that he is still finding success with these roles, it'll be interesting to observe the performance of his next original film we're gonna talk bro there was borat 2 i had no idea borat sequel was released anyways guys um that was a very interesting video sunny v2 does a fantastic job with um his videos um this is not the first video i've watched of him um he does a, a really good job um and Guys, if you like this type of content and these type of reactions, let me know in the comments. Let me know what I should react to next. Um, I'm trying out new things. I'm always trying out new things, you know, and whatever 
Why was I going to say that? I'm not going to say what it is. Oh. Whatever tickles you. I don't know why I was going to say that, but anyways, I, 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 I did. But whatever... I, I really don't know what the expression is, but... Whatever you guys are interested in, let me know in the comments. And you can also request a video. Um, so here's the thing. Suggest a video in the comments. Request a video um, in the link that is pinned in the comments. Okay? Um, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Now you can get full access to exclusive content, special reactions to shows, series, anime, full movies, and even request a video of your choice. Just become a YouTube member or join Buy Me A Coffee today. Find out more. The link is in the description. Never break. Always fight. Never quit. Do it right. Play the game.